Alright everyone, hey, back for another episode of Day Art Stodges Vlog. This is episode 42. I am Henry Thurlow and this is... I am Stephen Murphy. I'm the CG director here at Day Art Stadio. And that's not Arthel again. So we waited three straight weeks and Arthel never showed up. Arthel will be back at the studio someday. We, we look forward to seeing you again someday, Arthel. All right, so I'm going to do this one with Stephen. Uh, Long-time viewers of the vlog have seen Stephen before from time to time. Um, <clears throat> I think we did have you up here actually doing a few. Very briefly. But, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, so all right, this will be this, this one will be the two of us. So um, <clears throat> what is the topic today, Stephen? Uh, the topic today is, I guess, you know, how like when you watch anime or any type of media and certain things... Uh, don't translate uh, culturally as as much as you think they would, and I think more specifically, you know, Western things that you see in anime that that just don't sit right with the audience. So, uh, and vice versa, right? So yeah. it's like sometimes there's, you know, there's Western productions that take place in Japan or have Japanese characters, and sometimes they get it right and it looks great, and other times there's something cringy about it, right? Yeah. And something's not right here, <clears throat> and then vice versa. Sometimes in anime, right? And, in Japanese media, all of a sudden there's a scene that takes place in America or something like that, yeah. and uh, sometimes they do it great, but other times it's cringy, and you're like, ah, oh, they did something wrong here, yeah. right? And so we just we thought we'd talk about that a little bit, yeah. ideas and opinions on that. So okay, so where 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 do you where do you start? Well, you know, I actually didn't prepare any notes. <laughs> Me neither. We're um, just we're, we're doing it live. Yeah. To pull one out of my head because this one's like uh -huh. is galvanized um, <clears throat> is like the Metal Gear series, and I know mm -hmm. they did an offshoot with Raiden. I think it's called Metal Gear Thunder Rising or something like that. Metal Gear Rising, the one with Raiden, and it's it's designed to be sort of like outlandish and and hyper kinetic because that character was like a flying robot ninja with like white blood and stuff. Um, but I'll jump ahead to the final boss fight, which again I know we live in the age of spoilers, and if I give something away, like my my career's over as a, as a human being. But <laughs> um, spoilers. Spoilers to a, a like a six year old game. Um, the final boss is like the president of the United States or like the vice president. I think well, now I'm never gonna play it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. But the Thanks. vice the vice president or president. I think it's the vice president. This guy is like the most American corn fed looking American that ever American. He's got the glasses. He's got like the shirt and tie. And he's got the pants. But he's in a giant Metal Gear Ray or Rex or whatever it is. And you beat you. That's of course that's the second final boss fight. But he comes out and his gestures and everything is so like a like a stereotype of what like an American is. It's like pre Donald Trump. <clears throat> Do you, you know? think that that was a case of? Uh... Uh, of them doing it on purpose, though, or or of them trying to get an American right, but then messing it up. I think the former. I and to, to be fair to them, but it's so it's the, the, but the game itself does have like cathar it has pathos, like the characters like trying to like get his old life back. The the but the game itself is like very action packed and stuff like that. But there is like it's they do kind of try to take the story a little bit seriously. It's just only when you get to that final boss fight does it just get wacky. It gets really insane. Like he does things where he like because I guess he takes like the nano machine so he has like iron skin and stuff like that. So when you hit him the effect looks cool because like you see the iron part. But that he's so strong that he grabs Raiden and he literally points to the sky and then kicks him like a, he bunts him like a football. You know and he does the whole touchdown and like the, all this stuff like that. I'm like what is this? You know, and I think that was sort of their like interpretation of every single like American. Well, okay, it, it, if you're going for, uh, see, I, 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 I forgive that totally though, yeah. and I think that that's actually okay to do if you're doing parody, right? I'm not I offended know, by it. By I, the way. I know I that I know totally. I know we live in a super sensitive world now, so yeah. you can't parody a lot. Yeah. Uh, but but some things you still can parody and like a vice president, like a yeah. I guess it's okay, um, and so uh, but. You know, it, it, as long as you know you're parodying it, and it's like you know, I, I, I'm I'm making this yeah. uh, to be fun and silly and theatrical, then at least you know what you're doing. You're showing sure. the audience the thing you want to show them. But th there is a difference between that and like, oh, I'm going to show a natural American town, but then like you just mess up on a ton of things and you put a bunch of Japanese raccoon stuff city. in it. Yeah. Well, oh, so city. yeah, yeah, okay, Allergies. so <clears throat> so you say Raccoon City from uh, the Resident Evil Biohazard. And then, no, oh, oh, and, and what, was, what was the other one? Uh, Silent Hill. So this topic actually came up uh, via the man behind the camera here, uh, Ben. Yeah. 
Yep. Uh, it, it, the one wearing a, wearing a mask, by the way. <laughs> you know. You got to point that out. Yeah. Point well, that out. Someone's gonna. <laughs> the, the chat's gonna point out again. Like, why are you guys not wearing masks? Um. So the example he gave, uh, you, you could say it, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll say it off camera, but I remember playing Silent Hill 2 back in the day and um, thinking, like, when you'd walk around the town, a lot of these buildings were covered in, like, white tarp. And I thought that was a really creepy element, kind of reminded me of, like, an insane asylum, like, padded walls, and it was really, like, creepy. Why are all these buildings covered in, like, white tarp? And it wasn't until I came to Japan and realized that when they build a building in the city, they cover the whole building in white tarp to prevent debris falling onto the street and damaging the buildings. I like, wait a minute, that's not really a scary, that's like a normal thing. So I thought it was quite interesting for me to see something that I interpreted as being like uh, purposefully like creepy. An interesting like uh, world design choice right. or something. But like in the Japan, I realized, wait a minute, that's just... Yeah, thing it's not they, an interesting world design choice at all. It's because they, they just put the normal thing that happens around the town. It's ubiquitous, exactly. yeah. Exactly. So, the, yeah, that is interesting. But uh, it, it's funny, we, you know, we talked about the topic a little bit before we recorded here. And, and, and one thing that I mentioned is I think how much you, uh, uh, these these companies that, that make mess ups or people that make mess ups uh, are forgiven depends on the success of the game and how cool it is or, or movie or whatever, right? Yeah. So when it comes to Silent Hill, Silent Hill is awesome. I think everyone likes Silent Hill, right? And so like even if they uh, added a whole bunch of Japanese elements, right, to this supposedly American town, so that was probably a mess up. It's like actually when they build buildings in America, you don't put those tarps. Those tarps are a uniquely kind of Japanese thing that you just had in your American city, right? But because the game is so cool, uh, it doesn't matter that that's a little weird. It, it, in fact, you can almost think of it as like, oh, that, that was a good choice. Like, it, mess up or not mess up, isn't it neat that there's that mix of two cultures there, right? Sure, yeah. And everyone's happy and everyone's smiling because it's it's so cool, right? Yeah. And everyone loves it. But if the game was a flop or, or the same is applied to some other, uh, y you know, project that that isn't good then it's like look at the fools that messed up with that so my example yeah. of, of that it's hard for me to say because like i you know i work in the entertainment industry so i never know who i'm gonna meet and, and who work on different things so it is kind of i mean i mentioned it, the metal gear thing but i met all those guys that created a game in kojima so i was like that you know but so uh, I, I don't mean uh <laughs> I don't, you know i'm not i'm not attacking any of the individuals that made any of this but like there was the Wolverine movie where he came to Japan, right? Yeah. So look, I gotta just give my honest uh, opinion. So he, he, uh, I, I love the character Wolverine and Hugh Jackman's character and everything like that. So uh, there's a lot to like, but like uh, it's too late. You already heard his feelings. But one thing that I gotta point out as a person who's lived in Japan, you know, there's some scenes where he's like walking down the bad alleys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, oh, you know, you want to find where the girl is, like you gotta meet that guy at the end of that. But you, that's a bad area you don't want to go there and he's like oh, I, I can do it but then he walks down the street and there's people making out on the streets and like yeah, yeah, yeah. and like uh, doing drugs this guy like doing heroin or something like that and then you know he, some big dude like stands in front of him and is like I think you walked down the wrong alley punk yeah. and it's like that doesn't exist anywhere no. in Japan that is such an um, American or at least western idea of like that's a bad area of yeah. town right that doesn't exist anywhere in Japan nowhere there's not one alley in the whole country where that happens no one does that yeah. uh, it, it, worst case scenario people kind of bother you you know the, the quote unquote so. like worst area of Japan is probably Kabuki Cho which is down the street which is literally down the street which yeah. is literally like where I go all the time and literally the worst thing I've ever seen there is like uh some people stumbling out of the bar and actually throwing up on the street, yeah. right? In other places, that wouldn't even happen, but there, people get so wasted, occasionally, there's a vomit on the street. Yeah. Like, th that's the worst. That's the worst area of all of Japan oh, while I, walking around. <laughs> earlier this year, I was in Amsterdam, and I was in, like, the red light district for research purposes only. But I'm just saying, like, there's kids there. There's families. There is, like, and then, you know, and stuff like that. So, like, you think it's, like, this weird sea, you know, sex place. But it's, like, almost like Disneyland. You know, it's so funny. You know, so, yeah, things are always... Bizarre. The one thing I did like about that Wolverine movie is, like, there's a chase scene. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, like... It starts in like Kamiacho, but then like they turn a corner and they're like in Takara no Baba or something like that. <laughs> which so it's like it's like they're just that, cutting things that, together. You know what though? That is that funny. that is a. I want to get back to kind of the main topic, but just to comment really quick, like yeah. that 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 is something that happens in all movies. Um, 
where it cuts from just one good location to another good location. The w when I really realized the magnitude of how that happens is when they shot um, the newer, like the now ten or fifteen year old or whatever it was version of uh, Pelham One Two Three. Oh, taking a Pelham Ta One Two Three. Ta yeah. Taking a Pelham One Two Three. James Gandolfini and uh, and. Uh, Denzel Washington, yeah. ha in like their final scene where they're talking, yeah, that was shot right outside of Augenblick Studios when I was working on Super Jail in, yeah. in New York. Like we looked out the window and it's like Denzel, Denzel's right down there. Was, was okay, crap. okay, 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, when we watched them, so we are in was it Dumbo, Brooklyn, yeah. right over the Brooklyn Bridge in the, on the Brooklyn side, and but when we watched the movie. They have like the conversation and, and like they shake their hands or whatever it is. And then like they turn and like James Gandolfini is like, oh, he's a good guy or, or whatever he does. Right. And then it cuts right back to Denzel Washington and he's walking down Midtown, Midtown Manhattan. And it's yeah. like, no, you didn't. You didn't no. turn left. And then you just jumped yeah. into a whole different borough. Right. Yeah. Um, but but that. but that's uh, but that's, you know, that's the that's making that's movie making. Um, but to get back to the topic of like, so what are some examples of like uh, people trying their best, but it just didn't work. It didn't work at all. Like, in terms of anime. And stuff. In terms of anime or I guess even movies. Right. Because we're talking about culturally kind of messing up things when you when you try to uh, locate. You, it, w w when the location of your scene is taking place in a culture you don't understand, well, like you're trying, you're making your effort. Here, I'll, I'll do another yeah, one. Yeah. I'll do another one. So, and this time I'll this time I'll use a Japanese example, right? Yeah. Um, I really like uh, Takashi Miike. His yeah. movies, his movies are absolutely sadistic and nasty and yeah. gross. And uh, I mean, uh, was Ichi was Ichi his I Ichi the Killer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Dead, uh, de uh, dead or alive? I saw all of them. I think. Like, um, but absolutely awesome if you love the sadistic, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and I, uh, yeah, audition. Yeah. Kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> um, so cool. Uh, but, and, and so I, I almost have no critiques of him because I really like his movies, right? Yeah. I, I'm an outright fan. He, I guess, really likes uh, Western culture and Westerners and stuff. And that's also a good thing. Like, that's cool, sure. right? Yeah. Like, I, I, maybe he'd like to hang out with me. Like, that's cool. Like, that makes me happy, right? Like, like oh, and he likes adding aspects of that in his yeah. movies. But in a couple of his movies, uh, I think, like, at least one of the like, Dead or Alive sequels. Or Zebraman or... The, he, he gets, like, f uh, Western actors, like, like white guys, yeah. in the movies, right? To come out and do some lines in the Japanese movie. And again, I don't... I'm sure the actors try their best... <laughs> Uh, I, but but when I see those scenes, I'm like, oh no, oh no! It's it's like I'm like I'm in your Japanese movie. I'm loving it. Like oh, this is so neat and quirky and like and creepy. Like yeah. you know the way he just sets uh, the mood. And then all of a sudden, just a white guy walks in, and it's just like, hey, I think we have <laughs> to go down the street and see the guy over there to get the information. <laughs> all right, let's go. And I'm like, no, no, yeah. it's ruined. It's ruined. The movie yeah. is ruined. Like look. Look, I, I appreciate I appreciate that you wanted to do something different. Hey, you got some foreigners in your movie, but honestly, I didn't need the representation. Like, just have the Japanese cast I make mean, the yeah. movie. Like, yeah. I didn't need that, and now it's ruined. Oh, I mean, just, <laughs> the scene is ruined, and I'm out of it. I really wish you just didn't put that guy there. Oh, I know you were right. trying to make an effort, but it it didn't work. <laughs> I mean all you got to do is like type in like Arnold Schwarzenegger Japanese commercials or like some <laughs> and you'll see like a whole no, no other side of those actors you have no idea cuz they're acting like well, the thing is, yeah, it, it's yeah. it. Uh, this is why I, I actually genuinely mean it's not the actors. I'm not making fun of bad acting here. But it, it might be it most likely the is, yeah. is the the line that they were delivered. Yeah, it's yeah. like you are to say, "Let's meet the man down the street," and pause after the. You know, like yeah. that's the direction you get because, like, maybe that's what would work in Japanese. Yeah. But, you know, the Japanese director is trying, is attacking it from a Japanese mindset. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's how the line would be delivered in Japanese best. Hey, it would be cool if he just does it, but in English. Yeah. But then it's like, no, you don't get it. Like, it being delivered in English that way is so awkward and nonsensical. It's yeah. so silly. And of course, vice versa, right? So that Wolverine scene, it's like, no, you don't get, I know you're trying to make like a CD Japanese uh, street, but it's like, if you wanted to convince people, especially like I, the, the cringiest kind of 
aspect of that to me is like when it was released in Japanese theaters and yeah. just thinking about all the Japanese people watching it. Yeah. Like, they're going to be like, what are you doing? Because to them, that scene would be the same as the scene I just explained, sure. right? It would be like, you were making a cool, to me, the Takashi Miike movie, it's like, you were making a cool Japanese movie, but honestly, then you added these elements of my culture in there, which you shouldn't have because you didn't do it right. Yeah. But, but then, uh, from the Wolverine perspective, Japanese people were probably like, oh, I was enjoying the American comic book movie, but then why'd you make J Japanese street look like this? Guys, you messed it up. Right? And, and by the way, just if you've ever been in a Japanese movie theater doing a movie, you would never know if they liked anything or not because it, it, you can drop a pin and hear it like hit the ground. They're so quiet. I love it. I love it. I, stay through the credits. That's, and that's a totally yeah. separate thing. But uh, yeah, yeah. It, but uh, it, uh, when you go to a movie theater in Japan, it, it is 100% silent from start to finish. Everyone is sitting in their seats yep. and everyone watches through the credits. I absolutely love it. That is how I demand to watch movies. <laughs> and when I go back to America, I actually hate watching movies. I almost can't even see them. In yeah, it's I can't because yeah, science, yeah. The, in Japan, there's a sign seating too. Yeah. yeah, you don't just get to walk in and then randomly. But uh, yeah. when I go to an American theater, it's like, people talking, people chatting, and then just like, oh, snap, ah, ha, 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 ah, and then you know, just ridiculousness, like, uh, clapping, oh, he yeah, just yeah, whooped yeah. the guy's ass, why are you clapping, yeah. like, just watch the movie, like, or is that how you watch, like, TV at home, like, imagine you're alone on your couch, right, this is, this so, this, no, 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 it's just 100% <laughs> alone moment. on your couch, yeah, right, yeah. and it, so no one's around, you're just alone in your apartment, and you're watching Die Hard, right, yeah, yeah. like, is that how you watch it, like, throw him off the roof, throw him off the roof, he threw <laughs> he threw him off the roof. Oh snap! What what are you doing? Watch the movie. Here's how you should watch the movie. Yeah. Here's how you should watch the movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll say this. There's, that's that's a cool scene. There's only been. That's how you should watch the movie. Yeah. Ha, that's a cool scene. Boom. That's the extent to which anything should leave your mouth. There's there's two there's two times <laughs> where audience interaction was thoroughly enjoyable for me in a movie theater because I'm like you. I hate that experience. <laughs> One was Rush Hour Two. Like, it was just thoroughly a good time with everybody. Everybody was laughing. It was a good time. And, like, at, at the end of those Rush Hour movies, there's always, like, a, a gag reel of like Jackie Chan getting hurt or messing lines. And there's a scene where, like, the main villain, flat spoilers, falls out the building and crashes into a taxi. Well, now I'm never going to see it. And Chris Tucker leans over, and he ad-libs it. He goes, damn, he ain't going to be in Rush Hour 3. And the whole audience, I mean, including myself, just fell over laughing because it, it was like, it was like you knew everyone was thinking that at the same time, and he said it. And it's like, it, that was great. And the other interaction was, the second Matrix movie where like Neo fights all the Agent Smiths and stuff like that and um, I'm sitting there quiet and like the, the thing act, like ends the whole fight ends Neo flies away and the agents are kind of like looking there like butt hurt and stuff like that and there's just this woman in the back background going damn he whooped all your asses and I just fell over like I thought that was the well, funniest well sometimes funniest it's funny though like so if people have good comedic timing yeah, yeah, yeah. but I mean I it, I, it yeah. does take you out of the movie but yeah, yeah. I mean sometimes if your comedic timing but it was, like, is natural, so good almost, yeah, okay. but, uh, yeah, but Dwight uh, Lark's not a good thing yeah. the uh, the Lord of the the last Lord of the Rings movie for me was ridiculous a everyone clapped and stood up and cheered when literally anything happened you'd be like oh it's Aragorn's last uh, introduction oh, yeah. oh it's this guy's it's this guy's it's this guy's and then like he would stab someone and be like that's how you use your sword and I'm like I literally have not heard two thirds of the lines yeah. of dialogue from the movie because you're cheering every little bit that you see Yeah. Uh, in between your cheering sessions no, uh, yeah, unbelievable um, but you know what's funny this isn't totally 100% a tangent though because yeah. these are the kind of things to bring it back to the point but 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 legitimately these are the kind of things that like you do kind of need to know so if if a Japanese filmmaker makes a a scene in an American movie theater, mm -hmm. they should be aware of things like this and add these aspects. Like, yeah. if everyone's sitting quietly and then watches through the credits in the American movie theater, that's strange. And then similarly, if in Wolverine 4 or whatever, uh, he's back in Japan, if he goes to a movie theater and he's like, I cannot hear the movie over everyone cheering, and be like, you got it wrong. Yeah. So to, to know these little things, you know, is kind of... It gets really, it gets really complicated too, and it bringing it back to the original point about the Silent Hill and Raccoon City and stuff like that, where we could say, hey, that's not how the you know the 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 waterworks work in America, or like that's not how they're built. That looks more European or Japanese. It I think it's part of the charm uh, the, of this fusion of East and West and these types of things. I think the one thing, and this is my last point, is that I want to comment on is what kind of sometimes takes me out of the game with the Biohazard and the Metal Gears, is that like. I'm an American character, you know, and I can, maybe we've already belabored this point, but it's those things, the, the delivery of the lines or certain decision-making of characters or, or, or those types of arcs 
are not uniquely Western. They're, they, so it's, it's so you get this weird personality, uncanny valley. It's not visual. It's 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 this personality, like you know, I'm American. You know, I, I need. To, I do want to. I do want to just say to 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 wrap it up in a, in yeah. a not the like um and, and Arthel will appreciate me saying this wherever he is. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it, Arthel often says like the, the movie just needs to be good. It just has to be good at the end, right? Uh, but and and often we have to ask that you know you have to explain it more than that. The word right. "good" is not much. It's not subjective. Yeah. But sometimes I, I do agree with that. Whereas, like, it, it just at its base, it just needs to be a good thing, right? Yeah. Because even if there are scenes that are awkward, and you have the wrong movie theater and the wrong movie, and et cetera, et cetera, uh, the wrong tarps in the wrong yeah. country. Um, if the project is so genuinely good, people will appreciate that. Yeah. So uh, a random character wearing samurai armor in an American movie, off the top of your head, if that movie is bad at all, everyone's going to ridicule that. But if it's Star Wars and you know Darth right. Vader is highly, helmet, highly yeah. influenced by the Genji helmet and everything like that, well, now all of a sudden, the Japanese fan base, the American fan base... Well, it was a mix of the stuff, and maybe it didn't meld perfectly, but wasn't it super cool? And then if everyone says in unison, yes, it was really cool, then every, everything is forgiven, and good job with the trying to mix stuff, right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, uh, you know, no director can actually be perfect. I think being aware of that, and, and so trying to do as much research as possible uh, is important. But then at the end of the day, just really trying to make the best project possible so that if any of these mess ups are anywhere scattered throughout your project, they are instantly forgiven because of the other amazing things yeah. in your project. I, I, I think that should be always yeah. the goal. Yeah, Star Wars has a lot of Eastern influence. Now, I have a question for you, like the lightsaber. Do you think that's modeled after the samurai sword or like a broad sword? Because you both have to use both hands to wield it. I wonder, you know, what do you think, camera guy? I never thought about that. Because yeah. <laughs> everything else is Eastern influence. You look at the Jedi, they got like the Dogi and stuff like that. Darth Vader has the Genji helmet. I would have to probably, off the top of my head, without, I, I, you know, if I rewatch it with the question in mind, I might answer differently, but probably it would be Samurai, just because I think the whole... The whole the, the whole battle sequences are highly like Akira Kurosawa yeah. like influenced and so I think like the ting yeah. ting and like holding with the pose kind of thing yeah. so even though the sword shape isn't samurai sword shaped at all I think that was kind of the image they were going for yeah. most likely some of the commentary I've watched at least for the episode four the very yeah. first one they they were kind of told. And it may have been limitations of the actor, Alec Guinness and David Prowse, and they were well, older yeah. guys. Um, they were told that these were going to be really like powerful weapons. They should wield them almost like like a broadsword. They should be like really big. Like, yeah. <laughs> but then I think as the series grew, then we started seeing Empire and Jedi, where it became more nimble and agile. Yeah, and using like the swallow, which so I think is like it was a... definitely kind of like it evolved. Yeah. I think initially, it started off as being these heavy, <clears> like powerful weapons. That were swung kind of slow and heavy, yeah. and then it kind of evolved into like episode. Oh one. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I know now, now got flying around and Because totally I believe the stunt coordinator, I could be wrong on this, but I think the stunt coordinator for like at least the prequels like that was Vic Armstrong, who's like you know, Conan and stuff like that. So of course he's you know very familiarized with the broadsword. But funny enough, this actually isn't totally a tangent from our topic, also because this is an example of like uh, we don't know where the exact influence was. You know, yeah. uh, it, there seems to be a little influence from everywhere, and that's. Really cool, right? It's not like they were trying specifically to be like, "Hey, everyone, this is samurai sword fighting," right? Um, and so, if you can avoid being like, "Hey, everyone, specifically, this is that street in Japan," "Hey, everyone, specifically, that's that person's culture," if you can have some type of original kind of kind of thing, because it, if it's your own original thing with lots of influences. No one can say you're wrong because it's your original universe, right? So there's actually no wrong answer. It's it's not a broadsword or a samurai sword. Yeah. It's a lightsaber. You know what's funny? <laughs> uh, did you guys watch Midsummer? I didn't. So there, don't so seriously don't spoil I won't, that one. I won't spoil All it. these other ones is seriously look, don't look, spoil it. I that won't one. spoil it. But there's a particular character. There's I won't a, spoil it. But the ending, the midnight. No, there's not the ending. Just, <laughs> it's not the ending. But there's a character that that like is sacrificed. Oh jeez. Uh, well, now I don't need to watch anymore. I know the sacrifice goes through. But but but, but that <laughs> actor, he's like an old guy. That guy, he was like oh, a I, hot model, like in Japan yeah, in the seventies. Yeah. They based all like the Bishonen. It, it was uh, uh, from the article I read. He played uh, like 
a young character in France and that character or somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And that character was like the basis for the Rose of Versailles, like yeah, yeah. Uh, like shoujo manga character. Yeah. Like so like, any so like character. his face was like the young boy glistening eyed yeah. face. As a super old man now, he's in this creepy role. Though. Yeah, I think that's like I mean, that's there you go. That's it's a snake eating its tail, you know, <laughs> like the West being influenced or the East being influenced by the West, and then you know now it's. Well, this was a very weird episode where we had lots of ups and downs and went in different directions, but I hope you liked hearing our weird rants. This is actually the kind of stuff we, we talk about at the studio as we're drawing, just random film stuff. And so I'm sure I'll get notes a, from Arthel. That's a little that's a little <laughs> glimpse in our world. Well, Stephen, it was yes. nice to have you well, on here. Well, Henry, it was a pleasure. Someday, Arthel will return. Hopefully, you know, to right the ship yeah. that is clearly gone off course. All right, everyone. Till next time, shitajiga daiji. Shitajiga daiji. Be Bye. safe out there.